seriously. This is like borderline for kind of like Tom. The story of my biggest native Appalachian brook trout starts out relatively unassumingly. I got a late start to my day and ended up deciding to try a new stretch of water. Without really checking my camera gear, I grabbed my bag and started to drive. It's not unusual for me to go fishing without any real intention of filming, but I always try to at least have my camera in case something crazy happens. I didn't even get to my intended fishing destination until noon and, only partially prepared, I started my descent down into the West Virginia backcountry. Alright guys, welcome back to another video. So sorry I'm not doing like a super formal intro, but I'm running behind. It's afternoon and uh, basically it is pre-spawn o'clock for brook trout, as you can see by the fact that the leaves are kind of starting to change colors. And basically I know that this particular stretch of creek has some pretty serious waterfalls or just some good barriers that should prevent fish from moving up. Um, and pre-spawn, for those of you who don't know, brook trout like to move a lot. If you watched my last brook trout video with Dustin, he said that there were fish that moved up to six miles in one day in West Virginia. So, what that means is these fish are moving great distances to push up these creeks. But the problem is once they get to the falls, they can't go any further. So you usually have like a, this time of the year before they spawn, you'll have like a big stack of fish sitting below barriers. So I'm running down here to basically hit a bunch of barriers and just basically try to catch some fish. Uh, so that's the plan. I'm gonna shut up. I've got quite a good hike ahead of me and not a whole lot of time to make the hike. All right guys, it's the second hole. I didn't catch anything big in the last hole. I saw a few nice fish, but I didn't catch anything, which is unfortunate. But I guess for me, not completely shocking. This one's more uniform in that like, it's real deep towards the head. It gets shallow up through here. That wasn't a fish by the way, that was me getting stuck. Little one. I'm catching a lot of little ones. None of these are even mature though. There's a couple reasons I can tell. One is they're just not very big. But B is they have very little color to them. This one's got the most color of any of them. But they're just young fish. And they should be colored up and they're not. So I don't know where the big fish are. I don't know if I just haven't gotten to them yet or what's going on, but. It's interesting. There we go. Not a very big one, but at least a fish ate. But, kind of been slow, honestly. Like if I hadn't fully committed down to this creek, I probably would move. Cause it's not been what I thought it would be. Stop it. He's literally holding onto my finger. Seriously, let go of me. You let my finger? He's still holding on to my finger. Let go of it, you silly sucus. Look at him. He's still, there he goes, finally. <laughs> I'm gonna try to put on a dropper for a little bit. I just think the fish are just not looking up very consistently at least. Oh, are you kidding me? As you can see, the day was ridiculously average up to this point. I mean, I'll never complain about catching a handful of native brook trout, but I didn't catch or really see a fish over 8 inches. Which, to be fair, isn't entirely unusual in the Appalachian region, but wasn't really what I was looking for on that particular day. At this point, due mostly to my late start, I'd given up on any thought I had of making a video. 
As I went, my focus shifted from fishing to snapping photos of the fall leaves. And because I never checked my camera gear before I left the house that morning, the photography session quickly resulted in a dead camera battery. Of course, you guessed it, it wasn't much further up the creek that I ran into the hole that would produce the biggest brook trout of my life. Oh my gosh, it's huge. It is huge. Dude, that is a massive brook trout. Oh my gosh, dude. That thing's huge. All right, guys, here's this brook trout. Chill, buddy. He's real, real big. I mean, he's probably 13 or 14, I'd say. Look how big that thing is. Tell me that's not a massive brook trout. Look at the size of the tail. Whoa, chill out, brother. Look at the size of that tail. Oh my gosh, you're being annoying, aren't you, buddy? I'm gonna try to get a measurement on here with my rod. I'm gonna measure them on my rod. And then I'm gonna get probably another picture or two of them. Look at the thing. And then move on. Gosh, huge trout, huge trout. Seriously, 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 seriously. This is like borderline the brook trout of a lifetime. Seriously. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, please, please, please. I'm shaking. <laughs> uh, there's no way. There's no way. There's no way I just caught this fish. Guys. <laughs> yes. <coughs> We're a lifetime. Done and done, boys. Seriously. Look at that thing. That's bigger than the last one that I thought was 12 over 12 inches. He's like all the way colored up. Look, seriously, seriously, look at that fish, guys. That is the native brook trout of a lifetime. I don't even care how long the fish is. That's incredible. All right, guys, this is my brook trout of a lifetime. He's completely colored up for spawn. Look at the orange on the bottom of him. And then, I don't know if video will do justice for how big this fish is, but seriously, that's like a 14 inch brook trout probably. Colored up. Look, even his tail. Would you chill out for a second, buddy? Even his tail is red if he would let me hold it up look guys even his tail is this weird stop it even the fish's tail has this weird red hue to it look at that is that not incredible Ooh wee boys Let's see if we can't get some shots of this fish for you guys i mean look at that fish boys is that not just the most incredible brook trout you've ever seen Look at the orange on his belly. I may never catch a brook trout like this. Over the years, some of my most popular videos have been about brook trout, and videos like the Goliath series have become some of the most talked about videos on my channel. At this point, I've gotten more questions about Goliath than I have some of my 24 inch brown trout. But Goliath to me stands as more of a symbol of what a big brook trout is to me. I know they exist, I see them occasionally, but catching them seems nearly impossible. And because they're so migratory in nature, they usually disappear from my life as quickly as they came into it. This fish, however, was one of the luckiest catches of my life. As much as I purposely hunt for big trout from time to time, I found that nearly always my biggest fish comes when I least expect it. But that's why I love it. The unpredictability of fishing keeps me on my toes and my mind wandering. You just never know what that next cast might hold.